All right, guys, first thing first, you'll see up in the corner there's a little box that says subscribe. Uh, if you want to get updates on when we come out with new videos, um, I would recommend you click that button. In fact, I will sit here all night long until you do it. All right. You should have done it by now. Okay. This fly that we're going to tie is one that I've been messing with for the last uh, couple of months. Uh, it's just a real simple caddis pupa. I know you guys like easy patterns. Uh, and you can crank out a whole bunch of these. And uh, if you lose them, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I've got an Allen N204 in the vise and a 2.8 millimeter copper bead. Now, if you have a 2.7 millimeter or a 3 millimeter bead, it's going to be good. This is on a size 12 hook, so just adjust your size accordingly. I'll be tying this fly with 70 denier UTC. And as you can see, I've got this cool Stonfo bobbin. We have these in the store as well. We've been playing with these quite a bit lately. And they're really nice, uh, really nice smooth drag, but they feel great in your hand as well. Anyway, we'll just start the thread and dress the, the hook only about a bead length back. From here, I'm going to attach some hairline midge tubing. And this is size olive. We also carry the micro size which is smaller than this and it's really good for midges and chronomids things like that. This is the midge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie that in right here behind the bead just with a few wraps and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this Vivas Pearl tinsel in size large. If you have medium you can use medium as well. Okay, now that I have these tied, this tubing is pretty stretchy. So I'm going to kind of pull it back as I wrap down the hook shank. So once I get about down to here, I'm just going to come back up and really kind of secure that in really well. And end my thread right there. Now what I'm going to do is just wrap this pearl tinsel up toward the eye. So I'm going to trim that off and make sure that you give it several extra wraps or even a half hitch here to make sure it doesn't unravel. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tubing and kind of stretch it as I make these first couple wraps. And I'm going to cover up that tinsel. And what it's going to do is kind of create a little bit of segmentation that you'll be able to see the flash through. When you trim this off, if you pull it up, not super tight, but just a little bit and trim it, those butt ends will suck down in and you have a nice little tie off. So as you can see, we have a, you know, some buggy stuff going on there. You could probably take this and fish it just as is right now. In fact, if you wanted to just uh, tie this in a smaller size, it would be a really good midge pattern. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some brown olive ice stub. This is probably more than I'll use for this, but I'm just going to preen it back and forth a little bit. Like this, and I'm going to tie it in as a wing for this fly. So I'm going to tie it in like this and then just double it over itself. You can see that makes kind of a, an overweave. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in with my scissors and cut it at an angle. And then once it's released, I'll cut these little hangers off there. Okay, so that's just kind of a wing that's going to go everywhere when you fish it. Now we're just going to cover up those thread wraps a little bit. the loose stubbing noodle and take my thread right behind the bead. Now during this step I'm going to use one of our new toys. We have these Stonfo thread splitters. And what it is is there's a there's a notch here that you put your thread in 
as your thread lays there you push and a needle comes out You see how that works so if your threads right in the right spot and it's unwound enough it's gonna split your thread right in half and it makes it easy to make a dubbing loop alright so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin my bobbin counterclockwise if you're right-handed um, that's the way you would do it just so that you can kinda of see that your threads unwound a good way to do that also if you if you're not quite sure if your threads flat or not just hang your bobbin still <clears throat> and it will start to wind the, the direction that it needs to to unwind so just give it a couple spins and then you're good to go now with this bobbin or with this tool I'll, I'll do it reverse so you can kinda of see it at first and then I'll turn it around but if you kinda of rub your rub it up and down the thread it will flatten the thread even a little bit more before you push the needle through alright so So as you can see, hopefully you can see that, I have two little strands of thread there now. And I'm just kind of keeping it open with my other finger, right by the bobbin tip. Anyway, at this point I'm going to take a little bit of uh, the touch dub wax and just kind of touch it to the loop a little bit. Okay, now we're going to make a little micro dubbing loop out of Arizona synthetic dubbing, and it's just barely long enough to make a nice little collar on this fly. So I'm going to take the fibers, and as you can see, I'm just kind of loading those up, trying to get them so that they're all facing the same direction, kind of parallel one with another. So that's about all I'm going to stick in there. I've got well, about an inch worth of dubbing loop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my bobbin and twist it and let it hang um, and it will twist up this dubbing. Alright so the thing about doing this type of dubbing loop is you don't want to pull your thread too hard or twist it too much or it will actually break. But now I've got a nice little dubbing loop that I'm going to take and just start wrapping up right behind the bead. Maybe kind of pull the fibers back as I wrap it. And you can see how that makes a really nice little buggy head. Uh, super effective pattern because this, this synthetic dubbing just has so much sheen in the water. Now the key before you whip finish it is you're just going to un unwind it. If you try to whip finish it with your thread all twisted up, it'll actually break. So just unwind it before you whip finish. Okay, and then we're just going to finish it off with a little bit of uh, loon cement. It's really good stuff because you can just kind of dab it right on the bead and it will, it will soak right down into the fly. That's about all you need on that fly. Anyway, that's the ice pupa. Tie it up, fish it, let us know how it does. And again, don't forget to subscribe.